Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader Guide. Full builds for all companions in a game from Prologue, Chapter 1, Chapter 2 and Chapter 3. So that counts for the first, I can call it 100 and plus hours in the game. These are the perfect builds, play tested on unfair difficulty. If they work on unfair, they will work on all other difficulties as well. Let's not waste time, let's go. Are you ready for Warhammer 40k trailer? As I am. The Emperor protects. Let's begin with Abelard. He receives charge. I won't explain skills like I did in other videos. We're just gonna run through what I took and why I did it. Then we go into Athletics. On the next level, we go into Endure. Then we receive Ulti, Daring Breach. Then we take Thick Skin, Deflection Armor. Then we take Hardened Scars, more soaking up damage. Then we're gonna take Weapon Skill, more damage, or better to say, better hit chance. Then we take Sworn Enemy more tankiness and more damage then we're gonna take carouse then we're gonna take weapon skill on the next level same we're gonna take bonus to petty okay 15 percent with dueling mastery then we're going with athletics then we're gonna go with a heavy armor proficiency so abelard can carry heavy armor then we're going with daring breach ulti upgrade number three then we're gonna go with Invigorating Hatred Talent, or should I say Sworn Enemy Upgrade. Then we're gonna go with Toughness, then we're gonna go with a Taunting Scream and prepare for the Vanguard. Then we're gonna go with a Combat Master to cancel melee superiority in bonus. Then we're gonna go into Toughness, then we're gonna go into Carouse. As you can tell, I went everything into Carouse this time instead of Coercion, because I wanna test a new thing from level 16 to 36, which I'll explain in the other video. This is for Prologue and Act 1. Then we're gonna go into Epicenter of Slaughter this time. Okay, that's changed. Then we're gonna go into Medicare. Then we're gonna go on the next level into Strength. It will not die, of course. Raise overall wounds, or better to say hit points, health. And the last one would be a Daring Breach Ulti upgrade on Abelard. Now, after Abelard, we receive Argenta. For Argenta, she receives Run and Gun, then Demolition, then it's a Revel in Slaughter, then it's Ulti for the very first time, and then we're gonna take talent called Unpredictable to increase critical hit chance. After Unpredictable, on the next level, it's Ballistic Skills, then it's a Swift Slaughter, upgrade for Revel in Slaughter, then it's Ballistic Skill, then it would be Rapid Fire, then it's gonna be Agility, then we're gonna take Nimble for Dodge, okay, we raise Dodge immediately this time, uh, then it's gonna be Rapid Reload, uh, then it's gonna be Demolition, Ulti Upgrade will be number 3, Bullet Hell Upgrade, Upgraded Rapid Fire, Agility on the next level is gonna be Dash, move out, don't provoke attacks of opportunity, reposition, awareness, then we're gonna take perception, then we're gonna take bolt weapon expert for extra armor penetration with a bolter, then we're gonna take second skin so she can carry medium armors without touch penalty, then we're gonna take it will not die, then we're gonna take the emperor protects, so if we get lucky she can survive, then we're gonna take awareness, and at the final level we're gonna take ulti upgrade number two. That would be Argenta build in this updated final vanilla version. That's probably gonna get even more updated once you start playing, but this will remain 100% valid. The next one that we receive after Argenta would be Idira Plus. I tested out some new stuff on Idira, and you can play her like this as well if you want to. Okay, so, anyways, analyze into Lore Warp, into Expose. Analyze, Expose go together. Well, again, check my other guides and other videos if you want to know how to play the game, if you want to learn how to play the game. We're just passing through leveling right now. 
Uh, on the next level, she receives a ulti, dismantling attack. Then it's gonna be a talent that we're gonna learn, which is gonna be advice and guidance talent. Then it's gonna be willpower. Then it's gonna be nimble to receive that extra dodge. We want dodge as much as we can. Then on the next level, it's gonna be instant exposure, zero action points for exposure. Then it's gonna be willpower. Then on the next level, the first ability that we're gonna learn would be pre science buff. Then it's gonna be Awareness, after that it's gonna be Inflict Despair, then it's gonna be Psy Rating 1, once it's available. On the next level, Ulti Upgrade number 2, more debuff on enemies, then it's gonna be Awareness. On the next level, it's gonna be Lord Xenos, then it's gonna be Perception. On the next level, it's gonna be Fresh Target and Logic. And now for the ability, I decided to build it there a slightly different and test her out on unfair how she works with precognition i like precognition okay and this is like the the biggest change that i've made on the aside from talents of course uh look true to be told it's not a must solid ability it's fun to skip those turns and so on and play twice in a turn but Idira is not that powerful to play twice in a turn. Some other characters, for example, like Cassia, would benefit 10 times more out of Precognition than Idira. Alright. I tested it out. You can stick with my first build for Idira or with the second build. Your choice. What do you want to play? Pick something out of those two. On the same level, it's going to be It Will Not Die. Then it's going to be Unnatural Luck for the talent. Then it's going to be Perception. Then... On the next level, intelligence into swift movements for extra for extra movement points, and the final ulti upgrades gonna be ulti upgrade number three. Now that would be Idira. After Idira, we're gonna receive Cassia, Cassia Officer Navigator, but this time full freaking Navigator. Okay, I was I wanted to test out Cassia on unfair difficulty without taking Officer abilities. Okay, so she is a mini officer, but an Omega Navigator this time. So this is the build I was using. Now, what build do I recommend? My first build with a bit of the officer abilities and navigator or full navigator. Uh, more damage comes from this build. More utility comes from the first build that I gave that you can find as well on my channel. You decide what you want to play. I kind of like this one more now because I definitely know what I'm doing after thousands of, thousands of hours in a game. So, voice of command, then it's persuasion, then it's bring it down, then it's the ulti finest tower, then it's the first talent that we're gonna learn, inspire courage, then it's gonna be willpower, then it's gonna be navigator talent on this level, perilous ways, then it's gonna be tonicity. This doesn't have any effect right now until we take this. Not of purpose. So after Tonicity and after Perilous Ways over here, we're gonna take Willpower on the same level here. And then here comes the pain from Cassia with a notch of purpose aligned with this talents. She's gonna become crazy from this moment, so very early on. On the same level, we go with Peasant Skated, Navigator Talent again. Again on the next level, Navigator Talent, Blood Ogre. Then it's gonna be Lore Warp. Then it's gonna be Finest Tower, Ulti Upgrade number 2 that you're gonna pick. Then it's gonna be Lord Warp on the next level. Then it's gonna be Perception. Then again a Navigator Talent, Mind Over Matter. Then it's gonna be Perception. On the next level we upgrade, I mean separate abilities, but they're the same. Natural Purpose is single target movement. You can move multiple enemies as well if you position the spell well. But... With Point of Curiosity, you don't need to think much. And you can play bo both Point of Curiosity and Notch of Purpose to deal damage to enemies. So this is the biggest power spike on Cassia on this level. Everything after that is small upgrades. But till this level, this is the biggest power spike. And this is how she's going to be from start to finish. On that same level, we're going to take Eye of Oblivion Navigator Talent. On the next level, is going to be Navigator Talent Ebb and Flow. Then it's gonna be Awareness, on the next level it's gonna be Fellowship, and Open to the Warp, Navigator, Talent. And at the final upgrade, we're gonna take Ulti Upgrade number 1. Cassia, 
on Mayan Fair run, and I don't know what number it is, but it doesn't even matter, on this run that I was playing in a full release. So again, not pre-release, full release that you're gonna play on 7 December. Uh, Cassia, Cassia was the main carry with this build. Main damage output, plus the utility, even even better than Argenta. I would say from, from this team camp and how everything went, who carried, it was Cassia this time, instead of Argenta and me on a previous run, for example. Now it was Cassia into Pascal into Indira. And then it was Argenta, Heinrichs and Adelard. Believe it or not. So this time I switched builds completely. Same also. Elidon unfair and everything, okay? But a different playstyle this time. After Cassia, we're gonna get Pascal. Pascal, this time I opted in for first that I played in a pre-list was a supportive Pascal, now it's a debuffer damage dealing Pascal. Okay, but this time I played him with a sniper. Analyze, he receives that for free, then it's tech use, then it's exposed weakness, then it's dismantling attack ulti on Pascal, which is extremely good on him, then it's passive learning, on the next level it's gonna be intelligence, then it's gonna be advanced skill tech use, so this time I don't wanna get annoyed like I did on my previous run with inflated skill checks where I couldn't succeed in a tech use, alright? This time I ramped up tech use from the start. So no more annoyances over there. And Pascal is a tech magus and he should be able to know everything about tech. After that, we're gonna go with weak body, weak soul for extra debuffs. Then we're gonna go into intelligence. On the first ability, this time I took precise attack, put a sniper on Pascal, placed in cover, went into analyze, like twice, in two rounds, analyze twice, and then expose weakness, debuff enemies on zero armor, zero dodge, whack precise attack, and then bam, with a sniper, crits out of 50 at early game on unfair. Okay. That's how I played Pascal this time, instead of a full support. After precise attack, attack, we're gonna take tech use. After tech use, we're gonna go with inflict despair. After inflict despair, we're gonna go into grenadier. Then we're going into dismantling attack upgrade number two. Then we're gonna go into logic. Then we're gonna go again into logic on the next level. Then we're gonna go into perception. Then we're gonna go into instant exposure talent. Then we're going into Medike, then we're gonna take perfect spot. Now when we're in cover, and that sniper, we want to hit every time. Perfect spot allows us to hit every time with a sniper. Alright, and that's why I took perfect spot here. So Pascal received the biggest changes. Both builds are valid. Okay, the first one that I gave in a previous video is a Trapper Pascal. Also very fun to play. This one, I'll see what is gonna be. Assassin or a bounty hunter, I, I have to decide that today. But this is the preparation that's gonna work on both bounty hunter and assassin, so we'll see what it's gonna be. After that, it's dueling mastery. I gave Perry to Pascal. Okay. On the next level, we receive Tide of Excellence talent. That's what you're gonna take. Then Perception. Then Ballistic. Then It Will Not Die. Raise hit points, raise wounds. And the final ulti upgrade number one on dismantling attack to immobilize enemies and reduce their movement points. Because I took different ones on Idira and then I wanted to complement both of those. So now I can say it's close to being perfect. And also, just so you know, on that same unfair, when in pre-release it took me like, what, two or three hours to deal with a Chaos Marine, okay? And a lot of luck as well. This time, with these builds, on unfair, I stumped him in 15 minutes. Okay. Yes, I know the game better, but also I believe that I adapted talents and everything to nuke him down as fast as I can. And I did. And the final upgrade, uh, the final companion, uh, would be uh, Heinrichs van Kelks. What I made out of Heinrichs 
is a prep for assassin but in a different way than on a previous build that i gave so he receives charge from charge he goes into coercion from coercion into endure then he receives his ulti and then the first thing that we're gonna pick would be defensive maneuvers scaling dodge from agility heinrich's head absolutely insane dodge this time not only heinrich's as well as argenta as well as cassia as well as idira they were dodging everything on unfair Okay, enemies would rarely hit anyone on my run this time. So, where were we? Uh, the extra dodge on Heinrichs, rigorous training talent, charge agility gives, again, extra dodge. Heinrichs is a dodge master, basically, he never gets hit. Then I went into agility, then I went into enfeeble. After enfeeble, it was Lord Xenos, and enfeeble is a AoE debuff, okay, psyker ability. As you can tell, I didn't took anything from Warrior yet. Then, on the next level, it's Agility. Then it's Nimble. Again, extra dodge. Dodge, dodge, and dodge on Heinrichs, okay? Then I took Lord Xenos. After Lord Xenos, I took Blade of Light, okay? For some damage scaling on Psy rating. Then Ulti upgrade number one for extra movement points. After that, again, I took Biophysical Distortion. Gave him some poison on his attacks. After that, it was weapon skill, so he can actually hit more often. And then I took a warrior talent, sworn enemy, to burst out enemies. Okay, I'm slowly preparing Heinrichs to debuff, to challenge, and to dodge, and to become an assassin that's gonna nab like three or four times in a turn. After the sworn enemy, we took Psy rating one here, okay? Then weapon skill, then Carouse, on the next level is Desolation, Desolation Talent, again, uh, damage scaling from Agility, which is quite huge right now, then Carouse, on the next level it's Toughness, extra tankiness, and that combines with it, well, it will not die, and he receives 50 wounds at the end of Act 1, or better say at the beginning of Act 2. And the final ulti upgrade was ulti upgrade number 4. This would be the Heinrichs build. Now, you're probably curious what I played for the main. So, on a pre-release version, I played an Officer Biomancer. I haven't shared that Officer, but it's on my live videos on my YouTube channel. Okay. I played an Officer Master Tactician Biomancer Squishy Full Support. This time, I opted in for an officer again, but I'm playing a Psyker Sanctic Tanky officer that's going to become a Vanguard. Uh, what is the build's main feature as a Sanctic officer? You rely on Resolve, you rely on Momentum Gain. Okay, and this is what I played, and this is how I complemented the entire team. I was giving them resolve they were receiving huge momentum and i could spam ultis okay that's what sanctic provides ultis 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 so let's go through my main and i'll show you what i played and how i stamped unfair in prologue and act one easily when i say easily it felt like core <laughs> i'm that serious so let's go voice of command into coercion why coercion i'm preparing him for some builds later on as a vanguard and instead of classic recommended athletics carouse and i don't know what uh commerce or whatever i went into coercion and you will go too if you want to play the same build because of later on you need it as a vanguard then he receives bring it down for free they still are right combo and then ulti for free finest tower and from this moment is what it matters the most so seize the initiative as the first talent that we're gonna learn on an officer after seize the initiative it's fellowship after fellowship it's better to die for the emperor you see drastic changes everywhere on officer as well but it's a sanctic it's not a biomancer anymore and it's a thank you sanctic while on a previous run it was a squishy biomancer. On the next level, commanding voice. On that same level, we're taking fellowship. For the first ability that we're gonna learn, it's gonna be a sanctic ability called Purge Soul. Damage dealing ability single target. 
that deals insane amount of damage to demons and to Xenos. It's scaling like crazy. On the same level, Psy rating 1, the bigger the Psy rating, the more pain a Psyker deals. On the next level, we took a talent called Focus. After Focus, we go again into Coercion, preparing for a Vanguard. After that, we're gonna take Ulti upgrade number one, Finest Hour. After Finest Hour, we're gonna go into Commerce. After Commerce, we're going into Toughness. On the next level, we're taking a talent called Destined. Um, extra armor. Every round, you're tankier and tankier and tankier. Uh, then we're gonna go on the same level into weapon skill, and then I said that this is a Sanctic Psyker Officer Vanguard that relies on resolve and momentum gain for himself and for his allies. Air of Authority is the biggest change aside from Purge, okay? So as you can tell now, I opted in for Air of Authority. To get the result, to get the momentum, to get those ultis on everyone and burst enemies fast. On unfair, you receive ulti way much slower than on other difficulties. Now imagine how this is going to work on difficulties under unfair if I say I'm building up ulti fast on unfair. With all of those ulti penalties. Imagine how it's gonna be on easier difficulties. You're gonna have ulti every round. With arrow authority with this build on Sanctic as well. And I took Dueling Mastery for Perry. I told you I'm playing a tanky Sanctic, I wanna have Perry and huge armor. Later on I'll wrap up Deflection as well during XQ. On the next level is gonna be Inspiring Speech Talent into Commerce. On the next level is gonna be Toughness into It Will Not Die for extra health. And then it's gonna be Finest Hour Ulti Upgrade number 4. Now that would be my Sanctic. Maybe you're curious of what I equipped. So, I was using a Sanctic Staff, an Officer Chainsword for Petty, and a Deadshot Stab Revolver. This is all classic, You, you I'll just cover it so you can actually see everything. You want to pause, pause it, and check the gear that I was using on him. Okay. I believe that you can pause all of this. I'll switch through every single companion and show you full builds on everyone. And then I'll show you my Sanctic and how to play a Sanctic fast. This is what I was using. So you can check everything out in detail. And what... What made unfair possible or whether to stay how oh, I stamped unfair again pause when you want to I'll stick on everything for like half a second so you have time to pause and this is what's gonna take you from prologue and act one all the way to the start of act two now as far as sanctity goes Ah, uh, this would be the spell that we were using. And the biggest change from my previous guide would be Voice of Command into Bring It Down. But before you do Voice of Command into Bring It Down, you wanna cast Word of the Emperor. And that's the entire point. Accumulating resolve on everyone. The more resolve, the bigger the momentum, the bigger the momentum, the faster the ulti. So, combo of Sanctic is Word of the Emperor into Voice of Command into Bring It Down. Once you have Arrow Authority, it's Word of the Emperor into Voice of Command into Air of Authority. And then you build up that momentum like freaking crazy, okay? Once you want to deal damage from afar, you have Purge Soul. When you want to deal damage close by, because you are a tank, you don't need to be afraid, you got manual melee attacks with the chainsword so basically you cover everything buffs debuffs play again melee ranged attacks aoe buffs sanctic covers it all and it's tanky bulky as you can tell strength toughness fellowship weapon skill good amount of wounds for the start very tanky okay later on we're gonna transfer on heavy armor as well so you can imagine that. Anyways, 
that would be all built for all companions, including my main as a Sanctic for the full release of Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader from level 1 to level 16 for Prologue and Act 1 valid on unfair difficulty. So now we want Abelard to become a Vanguard. So what we take, I already explained this in my previous videos how it goes, now we're just gonna pass through what you need. His stone feature, unyielding, the more he gets whacked, the stronger he is. Wall of Rakrit, that's gonna become Wall of Ferrocrit. Here, we're gonna take swift movements. Next one would be his ulti. The next that he gets is huge power spike with action point increase. After that, we go for toughness. On the next level, we go for toughness again. Then we're gonna go with enduring shield for extra tankiness. We're taking defensive stance for the Vanguard to get parry. Then we're gonna take athletics. Then we're gonna take counter attack stance to upgrade the defensive stance. Then we're gonna take a free grenade with grenadier. Then we're gonna take strength. Then we're gonna take power weapon weapon expert because we're gonna use hammers those are power weapons on Abelard then we're gonna take resilient beacon then we're gonna take athletics then we're gonna take weapon skill then we're gonna take unyielding guard upgrade one after that we're taking a renitent beacon as well for extra tankiness both resilient and renitent will give extra tankiness to Abelard then we're gonna take carouse then we're gonna take weapon skill then we're gonna take bulwark then we're gonna take taunting defense Again, everything goes into defenses. Bulwark will make him a moving full cover, by the way. Then we're taking on the next level strength. Then on the next level is gonna be Karaos. On the next level is gonna be Beacon of Might. Again, extra tankiness with temporary wounds. Then it's gonna be trusty weapons. Better crits with hammers, because we're gonna use hammers. And the final ulti upgrade will, would be ulti upgrade number 3. Now, why Carouse and not Coercion? Because I placed Carouse on my main character. Uh, I placed Coercion on my main character. Abelard, in any case, if your main doesn't use Coercion, then Abelard should use Coercion instead of Carouse. Okay, so everywhere, on level from level 1 to level 16, and from level 16 to level 36, where you see Carouse, that's coercion okay if your main again if your main doesn't have coercion then you go with abelard if you go with coercion then abelard goes with carouse okay so that's the only thing that you can switch in this build so you basically have two different builds for abelard with small changes once he gets exemplar the very first thing that you want to learn until you reach level 40 would be toughest steel for extra tankiness then you're gonna take a defensive stance, then you're gonna take athletics, then you're gonna take covering bulwark, then you're gonna take toughness, then you're gonna take hellish life. After that, it depends what you wanna go for. Everything that builds a tank is valid, for exemplar. Perfection under fire is also great on every single character. And the talent that's gonna give you extra action points, let me see if I can find it. Eager for battle is also great on every single companion as well as your main. So Abelard needs tanky exemplar talents, perfection under fire and eager for battle. And you're good to go as far as exemplar goes. What are the items that we equip on Abelard? We get reduced perception from enemies around him helmet. We get a heavy armor. Now, if your Abelard is with Carouse, uh, excuse me, if your Abelard is with Coercion instead of Carouse, you're gonna use Arbitrator Solomon Veer armor. If your main is using Solomon Veer armor, then Abelard will use Fortress World Origin Heavy Xenomesh armor. Okay, so if your Abelard went with Coercion instead of Carouse, you're using the other armor. If you went with Carouse instead of Coercion, you're gonna use Fortress. That's about it. The next item, you give him Carouse. For this one, again, Carouse gives temporary wounds. For the amulet is gonna be Grace of the Oblivious, you get it very early on. For gloves, 
classic weapon skill and strength. For the coat, we go with parry, of course. And for the boots, charge costs one action point less. For the weapon, it would be the hammer of Epiphany, power weapon. He scales out of power, after all. And for some range, we can have Melta Ultima, or you can equip some other weapon if you like to. You, you, for example, you can equip, for example, you can equip Righteous Justice on Abelard as well. So this is up to the player, of course. How do we play Abelard as a full tank? You wanna tank it all up. So end your taunt enemies, make a swarm enemy out of the enemy, wag defensive stance. If the allies around you, you wag Wall of Rakrit, which gonna become Wall of Ferrocrit, where allies get additional health around Abelard. And if someone is in danger, and if you need cover, then you wag Bulwark and you hide with Argenta or with Iliad behind. Abelard, so enemies cannot shoot at them. They're gonna shoot Abelard, they're gonna deal less damage. Brace for impact, once you're surrounded by enemies, is where you wanna whack Brace for impact and raise deflection even further to soak up even more damage. And that would be Abelard. Very simple to play, the build is absolutely OP. The most OP build is Coercion Abelard, but I already gave that build in my previous video. This is slightly different, because my main now goes with Korsh. After Abelard comes Idiratlas. Idiratlas will become a bounty hunter after the operative. And she gets the prey. The next skill that you're gonna learn, active ability, would be sensory deprivation to blind enemies. Then we're gonna take withdraw from the talents so she doesn't get hit from melee. Then we're gonna get wild hunt as ulti. Then it goes with action point power spike increase. You're gonna take willpower and you're gonna take psi rating too. The bigger the psi rating the more pain psyker deals after that it's gonna be willpower again as you can tell we're mixing willpower non-stop then it's gonna be pounce as a talent then for the next active ability we're gonna learn psychic assault aoe cone huge willpower psychic damage then we're gonna go with savor the kill on the next talent then we're gonna go with awareness on idira then on we on the next level we go with perception then we're gonna go with a second sight then we're gonna go with weak hearts for additional damage then we're gonna go with awareness then we're gonna go with intelligence then we're gonna go with a wild hunt upgrade number one after that we go with visions of doom talent then we're gonna go with logic then we're gonna go with intelligence then we're gonna pick a free grenade on idira and we're gonna learn an active ability the last one here that's called foreboding then we're gonna go with psi rating 3 upgrade we enhance psi rating as much as we can then we're gonna go with agility then we're gonna go with logic then we're gonna learn thriving in peril on the next level talent then we're gonna learn subtle manipulation talent and the last one would be wild hunt upgrade number four this is full psyker idira much less an operative and a bounty hunter this is a psyker okay a mage as far as exemplar levels go, you start off with perfection under fire and then every single talent that you're gonna take next will be those that enhance willpower, perception and intelligence on Idira. Or talents that profit out of Psy rating. That's all you need to know. So what I took was perfection under fire, uncanny sight, then it's gonna be awareness into flawless pain. Then it's the willpower, then it's the characteristic training into willpower, okay? And then once exemplar level comes, you're gonna go with combat meditation, for example. Because it's gonna give huge amount of willpower to Idira. She's gonna become an even stronger Psyker. And, of course, once you can take Psy rating level 4, that this becomes 5, you're gonna take it immediately. And that's about it for Idira. What items do we use on Idira? You're gonna have a Redbone Staff and you're gonna have a Deadly Repeteer Sniper. Very good sniper, she's gonna hit always with this one. For the helmet, tactical goggles. For armor, we keep it light with this one. For the first trinket, we're gonna take a Flamer DG weapon for additional damage. Then we're gonna take a Brink Walker Pendant as the other one. For amulet, we go with a Heretic Amulet, Gem of Dark Vitality. For the gloves, we take Psyker gloves with Torment bracelets, Emergency Injector for the cape, and Psyker boots, Battle Psyker boots for your boots. And that's about it with Idira. Now, how do we play 
he did at last. You need to prepare enemies in round 1 with analyze and you're gonna buff up allies with prescience, with foreboding, with forewarning, you're gonna blind enemies, okay, and you'll try to shoot with a sniper or shoot with a psychic shriek. On the next round, you're gonna go with analyze into expose and then you can opt in to go with Psychic Assault for AoE damage because usually during round 1 enemies are far away it's gonna take one round for them to assemble to get close by and this is when you're gonna start using Psychic Assault and where it's gonna count also do not forget to whack Precognition every time when you have one action point so she speeds up her initiative for the next round sometimes she can even play twice in a single round with precognition. The next one would be Sister Argenta. We create the Arch Militant out of Sister Argenta with versatility stacks. The more you got, the bigger the pain. The first ability we're gonna learn is a devastating attack to make enemies prone with single target hits from your bolter. The next one would be Breaking Attack Talent to reduce and debuff enemies further upgrade for the devastating attack then it's the ulti then it's the power spike with action point then it's ballistics then it's gonna be always ready talent then it's going to be ballistics then it's gonna be wildfire and this is the biggest spike power spike for argenta from this moment on she's very useful after the wildfire we're gonna go with a heavy weapon proficiency and prepare for the heavy bolter after the wildfire on the next level we're gonna take demolition from demolition we upgrade wildfire into flash fire it's extremely important then we're gonna go with agility on the next level hurt like hell is absolutely brutal on talent on argenta then we're gonna go with a heavy gunner prepare even further for the heavy bolter this is the time when you basically want to start shooting with your heavy bolt then we're gonna go with demolition then we're gonna go with perception then we're gonna go with upgrade number four for steady superiority ulti so she can use both ultis at once then you're gonna go with demolition again into distract talent into perception into breaking point talent to upgrade heavy bolter even further and this is the moment where enemies will drop in one round from Argenta. After that, for the last ability, we're gonna take a kick for some crowd control to make Argenta safe. And then we're gonna go in with critical versatility talent. After that, it's perception into demolition, into adaptability talent, into agility, into willpower, into swift movements for extra movement points. And the last ulti upgrade would be upgrade number one. For her exemplar level, the very first one that you want to take and the most important one would be Cataclysm. More pain on Argenta, okay? And after that, you can go with enough bullets for everyone. And now, Argenta is completely insane. The rest doesn't matter what you do. You can take Perfection Under Fire. You can take two extra action points from uh, exemplar talents. But basically, this is it. This is the power spike. I can show you what I took. I took Demolition, I took a Custom to Glory, I took Agility and a Grenadier. As I said, this is the last power spike, basically, where Argenta really shines. What is the gear for Argenta? Helmet, Gunslinger, Armor, Venom Chainmail, you stick with medium armor always. First trinket, Transonic Emitter. Second trinket, Caducitus Litany, Amulet, and only this one and nothing else. It has to be a Blessed Bolter casing, because it's absolutely hilarious, you'll always hit enemies with your Bolter. No miss, okay? You won't miss a single enemy when you shoot at them. For the gloves, Stabilizer Bracers, again for shooting. Monkey Hide Cape also over here for versatility, because she's an Arch Militant, and for the boots, it's gonna be Adrenaline War Boots for extra touch you don't want Argenta to die now for single targets you will use precise bolter whenever you decide to go with a burst fire you will use heavy bolter and that's the entire tactic for Argenta now how to play Argenta this is extremely simple you shoot at an enemy with burst or with basic if you go with burst you're gonna trigger rapid fire first once you kill two enemies you're gonna trigger revel in slaughter once you trigger revel in slaughter you go with run and gun you stack up versatility you keep switching between single shot and burst fire 
once it's stacked up, you'll have wildfire available, which means that Argenta on round two will shoot three times per turn. Okay, with a lot of bullets from burst fire, with a heavy weapon, it should be over 20 to 30 bullets in a round. Now, if you whack firearm mastery, you can easily shoot above 40 times in a round, and Argenta should be able to clear everything during her turn once you stack up all of those stacks and so on. If you see a disgusting enemy, you need a devastating attack, okay, and try to make him prone. And if someone gets close enough and you want to push them out of Argenta so you can shoot, that's why you use a kick as a defensive maneuver. And of course, another defensive maneuver, if you're surrounded by multiple enemies, would be to dash out. I also use dash a lot when I want to reposition for better percentage of burst fire okay so you don't use dash always for defense you're gonna use it a lot to reposition for offense as well now let's go with Castia. she's an absolute beauty and i believe that you won't find a better build for Cassia on the entire internet she's the main damage dealer in my team, the main one for crowd control, basically everything revolves around Cassia. She's completely broken. Now I gave you the build from 1 to 16. Now we're gonna go from 16 to 36. You're gonna become a grand strategist because of one reason only. She's gonna always play first in combat. When Cassia plays first, enemies are fucked. Simple as that. What we learn is the combat tactics. After the combat tactics, we're gonna learn Reveal the Light for AoE buff. After that, we're gonna go with Stable Routes Navigator Talent. Then it's the ulti that doesn't matter at all. Then it's the huge power spike with action points. Then it's the willpower. Then we learn Veil of Protection. Always willpower whenever you can. Talent, Veil of Protection, Navigator Talent. Then we're gonna go with Willpower again. Then we're gonna learn Glimpse of Fate. Then we're gonna learn Lore Warp. Always Lore Warp when you can. Then we're gonna learn Undam the Sea of Souls. Then we're gonna go with Perception. Then we're gonna go with a Natural Allure. How you see these Navigator Talents here and how you see them over here, okay, during 1 to 16, you need to do it in a, the exact order how I gave them. No mixing, switching. It's very important for them to be in this order. And then the Sea of Souls into a natural allure, into threads and faults, into perception, into lore warp, into take and hold upgrade number one, into guide of souls navigator talent, into fellowship, into fellowship, into awareness into zone of fear and this is the moment where Cassia becomes completely insane i'll explain how to play her later on then you're gonna take the course untraveled for the next navigator talent you go with a mastery of time then you're gonna go with awareness then you're gonna go with fellowship then you're gonna go with intelligence then we're gonna go with strange vitality then we're gonna go with under my protection and then we're gonna go with take and hold upgrade number two and for exemplar we're gonna take Combat Meditation to raise her damage even further with Willpower. And we're gonna take the last Navigator Talent, Unblinking Stare. Now you have all Navigator Talents in the correct order of how you should learn them. For the next level we go with Lore Warp, on the next level is the Point of Interest, then it's the Willpower, and at the end it's Nimble for extra dodge, you want dodge as much as you can, and this was the only spot where you can take it, cause we opted in to play damage dealing Cassia. Cassia is definitely the strongest companion in the game by far, and her Navigator talents are the strongest talents in the game. Play it until it gets nerfed. Okay, because I gave you an extremely valid build. Now, what does Cassia carry for gear? Cassia goes with a dark visionary hood. Everything goes towards damage here. She goes with a light carapace. She goes with a sinister diary. She goes with auspex. She goes with invigorating resolve amulet. She goes with sniper gloves. She goes with a noble born mantle and with expeditionary footwear. Four weapons. One is a bloodhound staff. The other one is staff of house Casini. I explained how it works. One is for buffs. The other one is for dealing damage. 
So once you buff up everyone, how to play Cassia? Once you buff up everyone with Cassia, she always plays first, yeah? Because Cassia always play first. If enemies are combined, you're gonna open up with Zone of Fear. If enemies are divided, you're gonna open up with Notch of Purpose. And then you're gonna use Point of Curiosity, where they're gonna combine. And then you're gonna use Zone of Fear, okay? So that's triple damage. And then you got additional action points to use a glimpse of fate and reveal the light. But combo of these three will annihilate enemies. Don't forget before you end your turn, don't forget to use three grand strategic abilities, frontline, backline, and re rear line combat tactics. Okay, and that's about it. Once you have ulti, you go with finest hour. You rarely have time to go with bring it down, like for a classic officer, because Cassia, you just way too precious to give turn to someone else. She needs to play, not anyone else. She needs to play. How I gave the build for Cassia and Navigator Talents, copy, paste, test out in combat, pick on unfair, you're gonna see what's gonna happen. You're gonna one-shot the entire screen with Cassia on. The next one is Pascal. We wanna make Pascal a Trapper, Bounty, Hunter, a main debuffer and a boss killer in the game. He goes with Prey, then you're gonna learn Hut on the Trail ability. After that, we go with Upgrade for Hut on the Trail with Trail and Shatter Talent. After that, it's Ulti, then it's Action Point Power Spike, then we go into Perception, then we go into Plasma Weapon Expert, then we're gonna go into Perception again, then we're gonna go into Pounce Talent, then we're gonna go with Raid. Raid is extremely good for the entire team, everyone benefits out of Raid. Then we're gonna go into Kill Squad, a raid upgrade then we're gonna go with a tech use then we're gonna go with intelligence then we're gonna go with swift movements after that we're going with savor the kill after savor the kill we go with tech use into intelligence after that it's wild hunt upgrade number one then we're gonna take withdraw to avoid damage melee damage then we're gonna go with tech use then we're gonna go with ballistic skills after that we're going with a combat master and into ensnare the prey or better to say now he becomes a Trapper. After the Trapper, we go with a Hunter's Ambush talent, or better to say we upgrade the Trap, then we're gonna go with Ballistic Skill, then we're gonna go with Tech Use, then we're gonna take Share the Spoils talent, then we're gonna take Nimble talent for the extra dodge, and then we're gonna take Wild Hunt upgrade number 4. As far as Exemplar goes, Perfection Under Fire, Pascal just benefits like crazy out of that and the next one that you should take would be the one that gives plus two action points during the first round. For the next one we take Uncanny Sight, then we go into Tech Use, then we go into Gruesome Kill, then we go into Strength and at the end we're gonna prepare Pascal for Heavy Weapons where we're gonna take Heavy Weapon Proficiency so we can equip Heavy Weapons on Pascal. What is the gear for Pascal? We're gonna take Analyst Helmet, we're gonna take Slick Body Glove for the armor, we're gonna take Bead of Concentration for one trinket, for the other one we'll be shifting Combi Tool with 20 tech uh, use. Then we're gonna take Warlord Amulet for the amulet, then we're gonna go with uh, Plasma Shaper Gloves, then we're gonna go with a Zaylot Cloak, and we're gonna go with Trekking Boots. For the X, we use Omniscient X from Cubis Delphim, and we're gonna take a Mezoa Pattern Plasma Gun for the ranged weapon, and this would be Pascal. How do we usually play Pascal? I said how Pascal is a boss killer. Okay, so on the very first round, round you're gonna analyze, but you do not expose weakness. You're gonna go into analyze, into perfect spot, into throw a trap, into a raid. You dis uh, go with three prey targets. If you can shoot, you'll shoot. If not, you're gonna go with cut on a trail and end the turn. On the second turn, you analyze again. You use machine spirit communion and then you expose you reduce enemies to potatoes and everyone else can kill pascal is a debuffer and battlefield control with traps in this case and he is extremely useful because he also gives huge aoe buff for damage on all allies okay and he can play multiple times in a round because of hut on a trail always always end turn with pascal with hut on the trail. Do not forget about it. The next one in line would be Heinrichs. Heinrichs von Kellogg's 
the Xenos Inquisitor. Uh, we're gonna go with Assassin. For the first one, he gets sick the opening. Okay, weak spots on enemies. After that, we're gonna learn Elusive Shadow as the first ability. Then we're gonna go with Upgrade for Elusive Shadow into Elusive Speed. After that, he receives Ulti. Then it's the Action Point Increase. And then it's the Willpower. After that, we take Inevitable Enervation Talent on Heinrichs. Then we're gonna go with Agility. Then we're gonna go with Lord Xenos. Always when we can, we're gonna go with Lord Xenos. Then we're gonna go with a Death Whisper. Free Attack. Ability. Then we're gonna go with a Carmine Whisper, upgrade for the Death Whisper. Then we're gonna go with a Weapon Skill. Then we're gonna go with Psy Rating 2. We upgrade the Psy Rating whenever we can. Then we're gonna go with a Lone Killer Talent, because Heinrichs likes to go alone, isolate targets, and burst the living shit out of them. Then we're gonna go with Toughness. Then we're gonna go with Lord Xenos. Then we're gonna go with Dispatch, upgrade number one. Then we're gonna go with Combat Master. And then is the Professional Acumen Talent. And then we go into strength for additional damage, we go into carouse, and this is the biggest power spike on Heinrichs when he actually becomes very useful, at least for unfair, with a warp speed. Warp speed is absolutely crazy good ability on a Biomancer, and Heinrichs is a Biomancer. Next one is gonna be Psy Rating 3 talent, after that it's gonna be the Bringer of Doom talent, then we're gonna go into Carouse, then we're gonna go into the Perfect Opening talent, then we're gonna go into the Weapon Skill, then we're gonna go into Dueling Mastery for additional parry, and Dispatch Upgrade number 3. Now as far as Exemplar goes, Perfection Under Fire is phenomenal on Heinrichs and the one that gives extra action points. The rest can go into exemplar damage dealing melee damage talents. Okay, then we're gonna go into Unrage, then we're gonna go into Lord Xenos, then we're gonna go an eye for the unskated talent, then we go with the willpower, and at the end we take extra movement points, although he has huge movement points, it doesn't hurt, he can cover like 3 or 4, if not even 6 screens of movement. He's an assassin after all, he needs to move, yeah. So, what do we take for the gear on Heinrichs? Uh, even though you profit out of force weapons, this currently until Act 4 starts, is the best freaking weapon that you can equip. Okay, he's gonna crit for a hundred with Righteous Justice. But if you can go with a power weapon, you will go with, excuse me, with Force. You can also play with the Ancient Force Sword and that complements his build. But you're gonna deal less damage with Force for Sword than you're gonna deal with a power Righteous Justice. Okay, and that's why I equip Righteous Justice because of that case and plus it's dogmatic and Heinrichs is dogmatic so it makes sense when you find a better weapon that's force with better damage than righteous justice go with a force for the helmet we go with devoted protector for armor we're always keeping light we want this dodge to be huge okay so always light armor for the Trinket, we go with a Knuckle Guard, the other one is Peculiar Trinket, for Amulet it's Camaraderie Badge, for Gloves, Redemption Gauntlets, for the Cape, Extra Dodge with Cameline Cloak, and for Boots, it's gonna be Blitz Boots for extra damage on charge. Staff, you can go with a Staff of Blood, cause he is a Biomancer, Psyker, after all. How do we play Heinrichs one? Kellox. This is very simple. You wanna work in feeble debuff enemies, you wanna buff yourself with a warp speed or Argenta or Cassia, okay? Who you think is a good damage dealer, you buff them up with a warp speed. Heinrichs also profits a lot out of the warp speed. After you're done with Enfeeble and Warp, you cast Iron Arm, you whack Endure, you whack Illusive, and you end the turn. Next round, on round two, you go in aggressive, with charge, with aim for the opening, with a death whisper, and you whack elusive again. That's about it, as simple as it gets. Okay, as far as Heinrichs go. First round, buffs, defense, second round, sneak in, wipe them all out, wait for daring breach, ulti, whack ulti, you can spam enemies like crazy, you can isolate targets that are far away, Heinrichs can reach like six screens away with ulti, and you can burst out main targets. Jaya Hidari, the main pirate on board. Let's see her build from level 1 to level 14. 
Já é, she's an officer with voice of command, with commerce. She's great at the skill checks, by the way. She's got some hilarious skill checks. After that, on the next level, classic bring it down, play again, play again multi, as well as commanded voice to spread the distance of her voice of command. Then we're gonna have fellowship on the next level, then it's nimble for extra dodge. She relies on both armor and dodge, as you can tell by the stats. Then she's gonna have a lasting impression for the enhanced voice of command. On the same level she gains fellowship, she profits a lot our fellowship because she's gonna become a master tactician later on, then it's move, 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 classic spell to move units around you. Then she gets some additional movement points, after that it's march, additional movement points when she moves someone. Then the commerce, then is the finest tower upgrade one with everlasting voice of command. Then is the persuasion, then is the ballistics, then is the leader's assault for aggressive Jaya build. When she becomes a master tactician, then it's a ballistic skill again, then it's take aim to buff allies, especially Argenta and Iliad, so they, they can deal very good damage with this. Then it's a solid projectile weapon expert, then it's the heroism. Classic heroism, zero action points for the officer next abilities, kinda a waste, but whatever, that's how Alkid gave her, then it's persuasion, then it's the willpower, the last one would be laser weapon expert, it, for me personally it's either laser or solid, but not both, cause you wanna play with one weapon only, and the last ulti upgrade would be finest tower number 3 for temporary wounds, scaling out of fellowship bonus. Now she becomes a master tactician. So, tactical advantage is classic, you get stacks, you prog the stacks with press the advantage, you receive additional damage, then it's the strong point. To give temporary wounds to allies depends on your stacks. Then it's the upgrade for the strong point, which is called stronghold. Then it's the ulti, that's kinda useless compared to the first ulti, then it's the power spike with action point increase, then it's the fellowship, then it's the fellowship again into against all odds where you begin the combat with additional stacks so your abilities are even more powerful than it's inspire. Inspire is the opposite of stronghold, inspire is offensive ability to give damage to allies, the, the other one gives defense to allies. Then it's unwavering motivation, the inspire upgrade so it becomes more powerful, then it's the lore imperium, then it's the fellowship, into it will not die, for additional health, or better to say wounds, then it's the hidden advantage, she gains even more stacks of tactical advantage scaling out of fellowship, then it's lore imperium, now we're gonna take agility, then it's the orchestrated firestorm upgrade number one, then we're gonna take nerves of steel, so we gain momentum even faster. The bigger the momentum, the sooner you'll play with your ulti, of course. Then it's Lore Imperium, then it's the Fellowship, then it's a free grenade with Grenadier, and the last one would be Lynchpin to gain momentum even faster than before. So Jae is like an ulti officer, aggressive ulti officer. Then is the joint offensive as the next talent, additional stacks of tactical advantage of course, then is the fellowship, then is lore imperium, then we go into the hero's footsteps for additional action and movement points. Now we go with Agility, then we go with a Brutal Hunter for additional critical hit chance, and at the end we get upgrade number 2 for Orchestrated Firestorm Ulti. And on top of it all, once you become an Exemplar, the most important thing to take on Jae above everything else would be Perfection Under Fire. After that it's additional action points, and then you can opt in for talents that's gonna buff allies, okay? Or better to say, that's gonna buff up your officer's skills. So we take Steady, we take Lore Imperium, then we're gonna take Reliance, then we're gonna take Ballistics, then we're gonna take Ballistic Skill Training, so she becomes even more proficient with ranged, and after that, as I said, additional action points are required from Exemplar Talents, as well as buffs for the officer, everything that's gonna buff up your allies around you, those are the talents that you want to use on Master Tactician Jai. You can also obtain for aggressive shooting talents, 
but I would say go for the buffs. Now, what are the items that we can use on Jaya? As far as weapons go, you can use both melee and ranged weapons, so you have a perfect mix where I use Shuriken Pistol into Bloodseeker Clave into Starblight, but you can uh, use like most of the weapons in the game with Jaya. Okay, for example, Sworn Protector is absolutely amazing on Jaya, as well as snipers like Hunting Rifle is with solid damage and uh, Mezoa Petter's sniper rifle as well, it's solid, she's got proficiency into that, so that's what you wanna go for, lasers and solid weapons. As far as gear goes, we go with peripheral visor, we go with armor of the undaunted, we stick with medium armor here, then we're gonna go with imperial scroll for even bigger lore imperium, for the next trinket, we're gonna go with Theodora's Rosary, again for Imperium and skill checks. Then we're gonna go with Chartist Pendant for the amulet, into Gloves of Endurance, into Rogue Trader's Cloak for the Fellowship, because she is a Master Tactician Officer. And at the end, we end with Commissar Boots, Ultimate Boots on the Officer. So how do we play Jaya Heidari? First, you wanna trigger press the advantage, always. Okay, after that, you're gonna buff up your tanks, Heinrichs, or your main character, or Abelard with strong point, make them even more tankier, and Irliet and Argenta should always receive Inspire. As far as Lynchpin goes, when you need momentum, you're gonna whack it and you're gonna have ulti. Of course, Voice of Command, classic, in to bring it down, also always counts as well as the ulti. She's very simple to play, always have one action point remaining to shoot at enemies, because she's also very precise with weapons. So you want to hit someone, okay, on every round. You won't deal that much, but still, she deals solid damage, okay? The main point is to buff up your allies. And now we go to Eldari Irliet. Irliet is absolutely amazing. She is the main damage output among all of your companions. Okay, single target damage. She can also over penetrate for multi targets, but this is a sniper. Okay, a classic sniper. So you're gonna receive Irliet as a fully upgraded operative. And she's got Analyze, Into, Expose, Weakness, Into, Shoot, Enemies, and Hurt them a lot. That's the combo. On the next level she gains Awareness, then she's gonna gain Ulti with Dismantling Attack, then she's gonna get Sharpshooter for even additional scaling with Ballistics to damage, and then she's gonna get Perception, Into, Nimble, you want high dodge on Iliad as much as you can. Then she's gonna get Ballistics. Then is the perception, then is the precise attack, so you actually make sure you're gonna hit enemies undercover, then it's the awareness, then we go for the fresh target, additional damage on new enemies, then we're gonna go with swift movements for some additional movement points and reallocation, then we're gonna go into dismantling attack upgrade number 3 to remove dodge and armor from enemies, then we're gonna go into Lord Xenos, and you only need Lord Xenos and awareness on Irliet. She is a sniper and that's everything that you need. Now, again, we go with Lord Xenos, then we're gonna go with ballistics from offensive characteristics, all you need is ballistics and perception. Agility also counts because it raises dodge, of course. Then we're gonna go with insightful precision, it's the upgrade for the precise attack, then we're gonna go with a medicate, then we're gonna go with a perfect spot, bread and butter ability for every single sniper in the game, you wake this one first and then you shoot at enemies, while in cover. Then we're gonna go with a laser weapon expert, then we're gonna go with a comprehensive analysis, then we're gonna go with a ballistics, then we're gonna go with intelligence, into swift sight, in my sights will now cast only one action point, extremely useful by the way, I'll explain how it works later on, into dismantling attack upgrade number 4. After operative, she becomes the assassin, where she can mark three enemies as a prey and receives various benefits when she kills them. After that, the first one that we're gonna take would be Cull the Bolt. Absolutely the best ability on a sniper bounty hunter. After Cull the Bolt, we go with upgrade for Cull the Bolt, which is called Flay the Bolt, even more pain. Then is the talent, Wild Hunt, that is extremely useful, by the way, 
on the sniper. Then it's the power spike in action points increase. Then we go into ballistics and we finish with it will not die for extra wounds or better to say extra health. On the next level, we go with Ballistic Skill, then we're gonna go with Pierce the Armor, so we hurt enemies even more. Then we're gonna go with Acclaim the Bounty, that gives us an additional free shot during combat, on top of the basic shot. Then we're gonna go with Claim and Maim, which will be the upgrade for Claim the Bounty. On the same level, we're gonna use Lord Xenos, then we're gonna go into Ballistics, then we're gonna level up just a Flesh Wound Talent. This is the only survival that you need. If you're lucky enough, you'll survive. Then, we're gonna go with Expert Finesse for the next talent. This would be the boss killer talent. Then, we're gonna go into Lord Xenos, into Ballistics, into Wild Hunt, upgrade number 3. When you have only one prey, this is a boss killing ulti. With 300% more damage, she can crit and she can deal double damage on a crit, which means that you can, if you're lucky enough, one shot the boss. Then on the next level we're gonna go with withdraw when melee try to hit her she's gonna step back and avoid the attack completely once per combat. On the next level we go with Lord Xenos then we're gonna go with ballistics then we're gonna go with the Drukari weapon proficiency because she can use a lot of good Drukari weapons in a game, especially lasers. Then we're gonna take the last ability, which would be Piercing Shot for over penetration, 100% over penetration, and additional armor penetration. Good ability, very good. When when you stack this up with Call the Bold, it hurts like crazy. On the next level, we go with Pierce and Ruin, which would be the upgrade for a Piercing Shot. Then we go into Ballistics, then we're gonna go into Lord Xenos and into the Hunting Surge talent for or even more damage as a sniper. The last talent that we're gonna take will be Grenadier for a free frag in combat. And at the end we go with a Wild Hunt upgrade number one. Additional debuffs to enemies. For the exemplar part, the most important and the, 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 the like absolute bread and butter talent would be Death Dealer. After that it doesn't matter what you take. But this is the most important thing for her to shoot additional time when she kills an enemy. This way she can shoot four times during a round and she hurts a lot. Have that in mind. After that dealer we can go with a bloody mess for that double damage, 10% chance to happen when she crits it's OP as hell. Then we go with a Lord Xenos, then we go with a Pounce. And pounce would be benefits for all allies on praise. Then we go with perception, and at the end we end with contagious luck. And after that, we can go with perfection under fire. We can also opt in for additional action points. Then your officer, for example, can give her even more additional action points. So she's gonna start with eight action points. And there is an item that scales damage like crazy in the game later on during Act 3 if character starts with 8 action points. If you manage to do that on Irliet, she's gonna be insane. Again, that's a item based build, which you don't need to go for, the build is valid like this as well. What items do we use on Irliet? For the helmet we want Falsight Veil, for armor we want Ranger Armor, for trinkets we want Portative Manipulator because of the free reload and we want metronome as well for all characteristics that will go up by 10 when you don't move and she never moves she's a sniper or amulet the best one that you get at the start is still the best one even late on in a game it's a red bull necklace you get a dodge for the gloves and boots i want to equip them there everything that gives her dodge and Damage is the one you want to equip, or better to say, perception, ballistic, and dodge. That's what you need. For weapons, we can go with a hex rifle. She's quite good with a pitch black desolator as well. And with all Eldari and Drukari weapons. But you want a laser sniper on Iliad. How do we play Iliad at the start of the fight? You're gonna trigger perfect spot. After the perfect spot, you will go into Call the Bold, and then you can shoot enemies once, then you're gonna use Claim the Bounty, shoot enemies second time, and then you go within my sights. Okay, when it's a tough fight, and when you wanna kill a boss, you go 
into first round, into analyze, then you repeat everything I said just without call the bold. And on a second round, you go into analyze again, into expose weakness, and then into the combo call the bold over penetration, whack, then flay, slay the bounty, and then into precise in my sights. Into in my sights. What is also a very good start that you should never forget to do when combat starts first you reallocate praise you target three praise and then you apply all of the skills that i said early game you will play a lot with precise attack later on you will use call the bold and piercing shot more often than precise attack the main trick is how to use the ult wild hunt the more operatives you have or better to say bounty hunters the more targets the more praise there are and the more wild hunt deals damage if you got three then it's three if you got six enemies with six praise or better to say with this then she shoots six times if you have nine she's gonna shoot nine times so this is team dependent or like i said with because of the ulti 300 percent damage if there is only one prey when you wanna one shot someone that's the way only one prey and then you one shot with a wild hunt and that's everything that you need to know about earlier bread and butter again her bread and butter is perfect spot into call the bold into shoot enemies she's very simple to play to be honest and she deals a lot of damage in Act 3, the very first companion that you're gonna get will be Ulfar, the Space Wolf, Space Marine Ulfar, a classic brute. Now, let's see how Ulfar is. Ulfar is a soldier, marksman, not a warrior like you think, he's a soldier. And he starts with run and gun, classic, free shot and move, then it's the awareness, then it's revel in slaughter, of course, then it's his ulti, firearm mastery, shoot multiple times, but truth to be told, Argenta is way much better at this. Then it's the unpredictable talent for additional critical hit chance, then we're gonna go into agility, then we go into the second skin, where medium armor doesn't slow him down, then we go into agility, then we go in a control shot for more precise attacks, then it's Ballistics into Combat Master to remove enemy superiority against you. Then we go with Alacrity, which gives agility. Then we're gonna go with Awareness. Then we're gonna go with a Firearm Mastery upgrade number 2. Rate of fire increased equals more pain. Then we're gonna go with a Combat Medicare. Heals along the way, cast less. Ballistics into the Bread and Butter skill. Rapid Fire, you shoot multiple times with your Burst. You deal more damage with Burst. Then is the demolition check, then we're gonna go with perception, then we're gonna go with classic parry, cause Ulfar is a classic arch militant. Not only ranged arch militant like Argenta, he is a melee ranged arch militant. Okay, a full combo. Then is the bullet hell, upgrade for the rapid fire. Then is the dual weapon combat, multiple attacks from both of his melee weapons and ranged weapons at the same round. Then his steed will not die to raise his overall wounds, overall HP. Then is the demolition checks again into the firearm mastery upgrade number one that's gonna give him movement points. After that, Ulfar becomes the Arch Militant. So, Arch Militant goes with versatility you want to nab someone with his knife then you want to shoot their brains out then you want to use burst fire then you want to frag then you want to nab them again the more you do that the stronger he is okay and he occupies four spots he's a huge fella so after that of course the first logical thing would be kick that can make enemies prone and the very first upgrade would be martial art to upgrade the kick to make enemies prone kick is extremely good because it's basically another free attack he can nab with a knife then he can shoot enemies and he can kick them and disable them okay so basically that's three attacks with run and gun that's four attacks per round on ulf then he receives ulti steady superiority after the ulti there's a power spike increase with action points then is the ballistic skill then is the accustomed to glory talent that we're gonna take after that it's ballistics again and then it's 
wildfire that will allow wolfire to play five times during round although it's gonna take two rounds for the wildfire to work after wildfire we're gonna go with melta weapon expert and i don't know why i'll get gave him meltas I, I guess they expect you to use meltas this is kind of waste it should have been bolter expert not melta but whatever it's a wasted talent i hope they're gonna switch this then we're gonna go with athletics and then we're gonna go with upgrade for the wildfire which is called flash fire that will reduce section points needed for the wildfire then it's the toughness of course the tougher he is the better for you okay because he's both melee and ranged both tank and a shooter soldier after toughness there's a plasma weapon expert now again instead of bolter i don't know what they were thinking over there but that's how old far is then it's the close quarters training the arch militant can use two-handed range weapons within melee range he can shoot when enemies are close by basically then we get too far from this point on and we take athletics then we take strength then we're gonna take steady superiority upgrade number one then we're gonna take athletics into broad expertise into weapon skill into bold weapon expert that should have been over here i don't know why it's not but it's like that what can you do they're gonna change this after that it's a devastating attack to make enemies prone the last ability that we can learn after that it's the upgrade for the devastating attack into weapon skill into athletics into always ready with additional stacks of versatility from the start into toughness into perception into additional movement points and at the end we're gonna go with steady superiority upgrade number four so we can use both ultis at once and the most important thing that you're gonna learn on ulfar once he becomes an exemplar is tough as steel it's extremely important after that you can go with a talent exemplar talent that gives him extra action points and then you can go with perfection under fire and other talents that can provide tankiness to ulfar after toughest steel we go with a rapid reload where reload doesn't cast then we go with athletics then we go with the arms master of course i don't know why they never took arms master on ulfar it's absolutely great, great talent on him then we're gonna go with toughness into a free grenade and after that as i said action points talent for example what gear should we equip on this huge space wolf revel in slaughter amulet is very good on him okay and shadow field is also very nice for that invulnerability along with bayonet knife he has his own wolf skin armor that you can take and he's using bolt pistol and a classic astartes bolter and his personal knife wolf knife as far as other items go what do you want to equip you want to equip everything that's gonna give weapon skill ballistic strength and toughness those are his main characteristics as far as skill checks go you don't play ulfar for skill checks he's good at athletics but overall ulfar is just a very very bad companion for skill checks he's just there for combat how do we play ulfar once you get to Ulfar, the most important thing that you should have in your mind when you play Ulfar would be Curse of the Wolven. You want to whack enemies with Curse of the Wolven immediately at the start of round one with your melee weapon when you can to do multi AoE debuff on all enemies and scare the living shit out of them. Okay, this is how you open every single and that's everything you need to know about Ulfar. Everything else is exactly the same like I gave the build for Argenta and how to play Argenta. Only this time you can also wag them with a melee. So you want to switch when you play. You want to go kill two enemies, revel in slaughter, kick someone, nab someone with a knife, then shoot someone far away. And then switch. A bit of rapid fire, a bit of single shots. A bit of melee, a bit of nebbing, okay, a bit of kicks and switch, switch, switch. Basically, this, this depends out of the situation and out of the fight. He has a lot of variety during combat, as his arch militant class would say in a passive versatility. Yeah, he, he has it. It's a versatile character. Is it worth playing with Ulfar? Not as much as with other companions, he's not that strong, but he is fun. For Unfair, for example, he's not that good. The last companion that we're gonna get would be a Drukari named Marajai. 
Dracon Marajai. Classic evil as it can get assassin. Nimble, dodgy, evil, sniveling assassin. That's Marajai with a cool portrait. So Marajai is a warrior assassin with a classic charge, with athletics, with endure, with daring breach as one of the best ultis in the game, defensive maneuvers, his skills like crazy out of agility and the bigger the agility is, the higher the dodge that he can evade everything there is. He's very squishy but he's agile. And that's why all talents go into agility and dodge. Then it's the rigorous training, uh, upgrades for the charge and slash. Then it's the weapon skill. Then it's the breakthrough on Marajai. He's an aggressive charger, slicer, warrior, assassin. That's why breakthrough. Then is the athletics. Then is the weapon skill. At the end, it's a nimble additional dodge. Of course, after that, it's carouse into blade flurry into. Daring Breach upgrade number one for additional movement points. Then is the Desolation, Agility Scaling Damage. Then is the Agility again, of course, every time we can take Agility, you're gonna go with Agility for Marajai. Then is the Reckless Strike, OP as hell on Assassin. Then it's the Dueling Mastery that gives him bonus to parry. So yeah, well, the Marajai doesn't only dodge, he can also parry attacks as well. Then is the agility, then is the carouse, after carouse it's contempt, some melee attack against toughness, scaling with toughness, okay, although toughness is very low, don't even know why they gave him contempt, but what can you do, that's how Marajai is. Then is coercion, then is the strength, then is the combat master, and then is the daring breach upgrade number two. If I was to make Ulfar from ground up, all of this would look the rest. Ulfar. If I was to make Marajai from ground up, all of this would look drastically different. Drastically. But that's how it is. So, he becomes an assassin. You get him from right over here and this is where you can level him up. For this, this is all kids doing now. So, classic seek the opening, weak spots on enemies, then macabre where you wanna go through enemies and hurt them and attack multiple times, then it's an eye for the unskated, for the dodge and dodge reduction, then it's dispatch, then it's action point power spike increase, into agility, into the lone killer, isolation damage, into the agility, into athletics, into elusive shadow, then it's the seize the advantage, more damage, okay, then it's weapon skill, at the end there's dual weapon combat where you can play with multiple weapons at the same time, then it's the bringer of doom, for additional armor and dodge reduction on enemies, then it's the weapon skill and then it's athletics and then he receives ulti with this patch upgrade number 2 to hurt enemies even more with ulti and from this moment you can level him up. Where we're gonna take characteristic training into agility, into the ambush, into the perception, into Lord Xenos, then we're gonna go with a free attack with a death whisper. After that we go with it will not die to raise his wounds, I told you he's squishy. Then we're gonna go with Morbid Pirouette, scaling agility direct damage on Dance Macabre, that's actually an upgrade for this. Then we're gonna go into Lord Xenos, then into Elusive Speed, upgrade for the Elusive Shadow, then we're gonna go with the Strength, then we go with Swift Movements, additional movement points, and the final ulti upgrade would be Dispatch, Cuts, Enemy's Armor, and Deflection by half. After that, Marajai becomes an Exemplar, and the most important Talent, talent number one, exemplar talent number one that you're gonna take would be Tricky Defense. After that you can go with additional action points, movement talents and so on, dodge, agility talents or straight up some melee damage talents. But Tricky Defense is the most important one and how you should start the exemplar. After that it's the Reckless Fury upgrade, after Reckless Fury it's Athletics into Professional Acumen for zero action points assassin spells. After that it would be Agility and we finish everything up with grenades and after this you go with additional action points and additional movement, additional agility, additional weapon skill. Marajai is not good at skill checks at all, he sucks, same like Ulfar. That's the reality. Maybe once the patches arrive it's gonna be better, but right now on this full version Marajai sucks with skill checks. 
Now, what's the gear for Marajai? Marajai is a melee, okay, but you can also equip a Dark Lens for some range damage to have an option when you cannot reach enemies and when it's dangerous to go in, but basically you want to go in and stab enemies. Now, what items do we use? We use light armor and always light armor for additional dodge and everything that's gonna give us agility, weapon skill and strength is the way to go as far as items go. Everything that's gonna give movement points is also very very useful on Marajai. Everything that's gonna give him crit and dodge or dodge reduction is also amazing and you can also always opt in for petty items and that's about it how do we play marajai during the first round you usually won't be able to reach so what you want to do is shoot with a ranged weapon go into endure and go into elusive get out of enemy sight to prac that insane damage on round two so you want to stay far away and wait for your turn because he is an assassin and a lone killer Similar to Heinrichs, only slightly better at dealing damage, but worse at buffs, of course, because Heinrichs was a Biomancer, yeah. So, basically, you want to, after the round one, after you shot and you are into elusive, you want to go close to enemies, open up with charge, then you're gonna use aim for the opening, whack them with basic attack, you can also prac in reckless if you really, really, really want to kill. And then you can go with a free Death Whisper attack into Dance Macabre. It's gonna unlock additional slices and so on, as well as a breakthrough. So you can hit enemies multiple times and then pray that they're gonna miss him because he's got huge dodge and he should be able to evade most of the attacks in the game. Attacks that he cannot invade, he can parry. So when you get hit as a Marajai, you are extremely unlucky, basically. Marajai is not only an assassin, he wastes enemies' turns. That's what he does the best. He wastes enemies' turns. They use their attacks on him in vain. Because he dodges everything. He's a slime. And now for the final part. I know you're curious of what I did with my main for this insane stats. And yes, this is the main rogue trader and officer. Psyker. Okay, Sanctic full tank that deals damage as well that became a full freaking vanguard tank so what i did unyielding beacon for free then we go with a shield of the emperor i'll explain how everything works later on then we're gonna go into combat master then we're gonna go into resilient beacon after that unyielding guard ulti then action point power spike increase into flat strength after that it's toughness after that it's a renitent beacon there is a reason why i took everything like i took in a specific order okay and you need to copy paste this if you want to play something op like this after that it's follow my lead ability after that is coercion then it's follow my lead upgrade with offensive follow then it's psi rating number two then it's toughness, then it's a free grenade with grenadier, then it's a taunting defense, then it's coercion, and then it's fellowship. For the ulti upgrade, we'll go with option number four, then we're gonna go with enduring shield, talent, for extra tankiness, then we're gonna go with commerce, then we're gonna go with strength, then the final ability that we're gonna take is the hammer of the emperor. After that, it's a heavy armor proficiency. Now we become this monster. Now, as far as the stats go, this goes up to 50 during combat, okay? And this goes up to nearly 300 during combat, believe it or not. That's how tanky the main rogue trader that I make is. Usually, on unfair difficulty, enemies will deal zero crits or one to two damage crits. That's all they can do to you right now. And this is probably gonna get nerfed, because I literally broke the game, but that's how it is. I created a monster. After the heavy armor proficiency, we go with a weapon skill, then again we're gonna go in the commerce, then into the beacon of might talent, then into the psi rating 3 talent, and we finish up with unyielding guard upgrade number 1. For the exemplar, perfection under fire is absolutely crazy, okay, especially the main rogue trader, it's a beauty of a talent. Then we're gonna go into still resolve for additional resolve, you can see how huge the resolve is, yeah. The bigger the resolve, the better the ulti, the more faster you can play. 
Then is the coercion again, then it's unyielding resolve upgrade, then is the fellowship and at the end it's additional movement points. After that we go with a talent for double the amount of parry. You'll see the talent, exemplar talent, that doubles your... Uh, not parry, excuse me. Deflection. There is a talent that doubles the amount of deflection. Okay? And we can go with all of those basically abilities that... Uh, buff up officer, firebrand, attention, and eager subordinates. These are the ones that you want to use. Okay, for example, our talents later on. Eh. Now, what items I'm using on my main rogue trader to look insane like this? Helm of Determination would be the helmet. Armor is the Solomon Veer. Armor, absolutely insane armor, by the way, scales up with coercion. My coercion is 156. Then, Scarlet Signet of the Inquisition for the ring. Extra momentum, the bigger the momentum, the faster you play with ulti. We go with that, yeah. For the amulet, it's Medal of Alacrity. For another trinket, is the Heart of the Nameless. Then, for the gloves, we go with Exoskeletal Gloves. Then, for the cape, it's gonna be Iron Cape. And for the boots, we play with Unyielding Vanguard Boots. For weapons, we want Perry. And the best freaking thing for the Perry in the game would be Watcher from above. It's absolutely insane, even if enemies pass through your deflection and through your armor. You still have a chance to parry. Huge chance to parry. Especially as a Vanguard. This is the best weapon on your officer if you want to play as a Sanctic. If you want to see stats like this. For the pistol, we go with a Stab Revolver, Ortlak Pattern. And for the Staff, we play with a Sanctified Staff and the Emperor's Wrath when you want to deal AoE damage, Lightning Chain, Lightning to enemies. This would be the Rogue Trader. OP as hell. Now, how do we play Sanctic Officer Tanky Vanguard? These are all the skills, by the way. You open up with Inquisitor's Decree when you can, and you go with Word for the Emperor, okay? Word of the Emperor. And if you want to deal damage during the round, you go with Hammer of the Emperor. If you want to buff up allies, you go with a Shield of the Emperor. And then you just tell someone to play again. That's combo number one. Combo number two. We go with Word of the Emperor into Aggressive, Hammer of the Emperor into Command, into Voice, Arrow Authority for additional action points on allies and then we tell them to play again. The third option would be Melis around you, Abelard, Heinrich, Sulfar and so on and say follow my lead. Okay. And then you go up and whack enemies and tank them in their faces while your companions go after you and slaughter them. That would be all the options. Basically, you should try to, on every round, you should try to ramp up Word of the Emperor into one out of these two, offensive or defensive. Okay, but every round should start with the Word of the Emperor. And if you want to reach enemies far away from you, especially demons, you always have per soul for a hundred percent hit with ranged attacks. When it's rough, when there's a lot of enemies, you pull up your staff and you get chain lightning. So you got everything, okay? It's like crazy variety. You can tell allies to play again. You can buff them up. You can give them action points. You can raise momentum. You can tank like no one else in the game. You can give all allies damage, okay? You can parry. You're fast and you're Extremely good at all skill checks and all characteristics. That's what I made. And a full know-it-all rogue trader. As a full tank. Absolutely amazing build. I love it. Okay, and I really enjoy the game playing it. And my unfair feels like a story mod. Anyways, that would be it for this video. If you enjoyed and if you find it helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'll be seeing you in Rogue Trader. Thanks for watching. Emperor protects.